In Chilean Patagonia, an expanse of land covering 163,000 hectares has been transformed into a sanctuary for South American Southern nature. The Andean mountain range crosses the territory from north to south, giving rise to a mixed and changeable climate. The peaks and westerly winds create considerable climatic differences between places located very close together. As a result, an unusual variety of plant formations proliferate with an associated fauna rich in species. It's the meeting point between the flat and extensive Patagonia and the steep one, molded by eras of glacial activity. A world of contrasts, the wild world of Torres del Paine. Located in the middle of the Andean range, the Paine Massif lends its name to the national park. The mountains, with peaks in excess of 3,000 meters, mark a dividing line which differentiates two completely different areas. To the west of the range, on the Pacific side, moisture-laden winds collide with the slopes and release their rain, which hardly ever reaches the other face. It is a cold and wet side, characterized by rocks, forests, and ice. The entire relief of the Patagonian Andean range has a pronounced glacial character. Gigantic glaciers sculpted these mountains and opened up extensive valleys, where icy water lakes still remain today. The present-day ice cap is only a small reminder of what it must have been at the beginning of the Quaternary, although it still covers an area of 23,000 square kilometers. On the east slope, where rain hardly ever falls, large plains extend as far as the Atlantic, the steppe gradually transforming into quasi-desert. Thaw waters arriving from the Pain Massif irrigate both slopes. There are a multitude of rivers and large glacial lakes spread throughout the park. The proximity of the Pacific Ocean and the numerous lakes attract water birds from the Patagonian region, which form into noisy and abundant colonies. Falkland Islands and Imperial Cormorants, different species of seagulls, and a multitude of anatids feed and breed in the park's waters and its surroundings. The black-necked swan is the largest South American water bird. It spends its entire life in the icy waters of the Andean lakes, feeding on algae, insects, and an odd fry or two. From the Huasco Valley in Atacama to Tierra del Fuego, the black-necked swan is to be found throughout the southern cone of America, seeking lakes located close to the sea.
They reside year-round in Torres del Paine. They can endure the cold perfectly, and the low seasonal variations in the region mean that it is not necessary for them to migrate to other latitudes. The park also has a number of saltwater lakes where small invertebrates proliferate, which attract the water birds. Chilean and Andean flamingos enjoy these saltpeter pools on the high plateau for feeding, filtering the minute shrimps and brine shrimp that live in the water through their beaks. The Coscoroba swan also feeds in these saltwater lakes, one of the most endangered and rare birds in the world. The latest statistics indicate a population of 400 birds throughout Chile, which renders the Coscoroba swan, together with the Chilean deer and the puma, one of the park's rarities. The bird population of Torres del Paine also includes a number of birds of prey. The crested caracara are omnivorous birds which until the middle of the century coexisted with the dark caracara, a species driven to extinction by hunters avid for their flesh. Because of their size, they do not pose a threat to the flamingos or swans, but the carcass of a cauquen or wild goose on one of the shores provides them with a real feast. The park's most interesting plant formation is the Magellanic deciduous forest. The main component of the forest expanses, more abundant on the Pacific slopes of the Andean range, is the Lenga, a tree of the Notophagus genus, also known as the southern or false beech. The Lenga give shelter to and feed birds such as the Caturra, a small parrot, whose habitat extends as far as the Tierra del Fuego, transforming it into the most southern representative of an eminently tropical family of birds. Even more extensive than the forest is the brushwood plain which covers the largest area within Torres del Paine. Paradoxically, although much less lush than the dense expanses of Lenga, these brushwood pampas are richer in animal species. The brushwood is the habitat of Darwin's rare, or petizo as it is known in Chile. When Darwin reached these latitudes during his historical journey, he was surprised to note that these birds moved faster than the horses of the gauchos who were trying to catch them. The rare's powerful legs enable it to reach incredible speeds, but the price of this evolutionary development of such powerful bones and muscles has been the loss of its ability to fly, as is the case with its cousin the emu, the cassowary, and the more familiar ostrich. Although under close protection in Torres del Paine, the population of Darwin's rares has diminished considerably due to hunting with bolas, 
either for sport for their eggs and flesh, or in particular for their grey feathers, which are used to manufacture feather dusters. The masses of brushland underwent serious changes at the hands of the settlers who tried to clear it and transform the area into pasture land. But when the national park was created, the brushlands recovered, as did the associated fauna. The six-striped armadillo is a specialist in walking among the brushland. Its armored body enables it to open a path through the densest thickets and acts as a defense against predators. When Spanish explorers saw one of these animals for the first time covered in hardened plates like a kind of armor, they associated it with their own suits of armor and called it an armadillo, although the Indians call it a tatu or a kirkincho. Armadillos are very primitive animals which have mainly survived because of their skin plates, which have enabled them to flee through the densest of brushland. But they also have powerful claws with which they can burrow tunnels in a matter of minutes, enabling them to escape the clutches of any enemy. Although the variety and number of prey in Torres del Paine would lead you to think otherwise, there are very few carnivores here. Canids are very scarce in the South American forest world. However, two types of fox are to be found here, about which almost nothing is known in terms of their habits and biology. The red fox, which inhabits the high plateau up to an altitude of 4,000 meters, and this, the gray fox, which lives in the Patagonian savanna and desert. All nature in Torres del Baine is directly connected with the climate and the latter in turn with the layout of the Andean range. The water mass of the two oceans and the numerous Patagonian lakes play a moderating role and the climate ranging between temperate and cold suffers very low seasonal variations. The average annual temperature is 6.6 .6 degrees centigrade, with maximum temperatures of 10 degrees centigrade and minimum temperatures of 2 degrees centigrade. There are strong winds for most of the year, and snowfall and freezing occur indiscriminately from January to December. These climatic rigors raise no obstacles for Patagonian species, which are adapted to moderate cold and the winds called the Furious 50, in reference to their strength and level of latitude. The common Cauquen or Magellanic goose even reaches as far as the islands of Tierra del Fuego, located beyond the extremity of the southern peninsula. There are three species of megalanic geese, of which the former is the most numerous. The cow quen feeds on grass, which is why it is hunted out by Patagonian livestock farmers, who claim that six wild megalanic geese can eat as much as a sheep, meaning that the large gaggles are competition for their flocks. Fortunately, they are protected in the park, and only the red fox, certain birds of prey, and on rare occasions the puma, can pose a threat. Mammals do not generally hunt the wild geese. 
The staple diet of the Patagonian puma is the guanaco, the wild llama. That of the red fox, also known as the Athara fox or guarachain, being rabbits and hares, which could reach plague dimensions in the park if the foxes did not exist. The park's most typical image are the peaks of the Pine Massif, from which it gets its name. The massif is formed of the famous pillars and the Pine Horns, whose almost vertical faces attract climbers from all over the world, and in the case of Paine Grande, exceed 3,000 meters in height. However, if the representative image are the sheer pillars, the park's emblem is an animal closely associated with the footlands of the massif. The guanaco is probably the most characteristic animal of Patagonia. Of the four South American camels, it is the most adaptable and can live from sea level up to a height of 4,000 meters. The relation between indigenous South American Indians and the camels dates back at least 4,500 years. It was a unilateral, close dependency, which is why the guanaco became a totemic animal. Until the first half of this century, guanacos were indispensable to the survival of the Patagonian Indians, who obtained flesh for eating, wool for clothing, and fibers for sewing. In former times, Patagonia was inhabited by millions of guanacos until the arrival of the colonizers and their modern firearms. Once again, the indigenous animals were considered direct competition to the livestock introduced, and they were hunted down until their population was reduced to 150,000, the number currently estimated to exist today throughout the continent. There is a stable population of them in Torres del Baine. The young males congregate in herds of approximately 30 until the age of 5, when they reach sexual maturity. At this moment, they separate from the group and seek their own territory in females and form a new family. The guanaco herds divide the Torres del Baine brushland and pre-desert into marked territorial areas. Each group has a dominant male which does not allow any of the adolescents to mate with its females and an inflexible hierarchy is established. In the mating season, these dominant males have to reaffirm their position in the face of new candidates, and there are frequent chases, biting, and spitting of gastric juices and partially digested matter.
In the same way as the Patagonians admired the Guanaco, the Incas worshipped the condor like a god. For them, it was the Lord of the Andes, a mythological animal which inspired them with respect and veneration. In Patagonia, however, they have been hunted since time immemorial. The fact that they appeared shortly after the death of an animal led man to think that the condors killed them and the legend of the hunter condor spread rapidly. It was even said that they had carried away small children by catching them in their claws. However, despite its menacing appearance, the condor is an animal incapable of killing large animals. The back toe of their claw is too high, which prevents them from closing it so that they cannot attack, hold down or tear apart their possible prey, lesser still, carry them off in flight. The Andean condor is the largest bird of prey in the world and the largest flying bird. With a span of almost four meters and weighing up to 12 kilos, this majestic flyer requires air currents in order to fly. Its enormous muscles only allow it to make 30 consecutive wing movements before falling in exhaustion, which is why they are generally to be seen planing in circles until reaching heights of over 6,000 meters. When Darwin penetrated into this region in 1883, following the course of the river Santa Cruz, he wrote, the general impression of the spirit is one of complete and despairing sterility. A few days later, however, he was able to contemplate the snow-capped peaks of the Andes and felt recompensed for all his efforts. This is Patagonia, austere yet full of surprises, with a bitter climate and tortured landscapes, but with extraordinary nature. In April 1978, the Torres del Paine National Park joined the network of UNESCO Biosphere Reserves. This came in recognition for its enormous importance within the network of South American nature reserves and as a guarantee for the preservation of the ecosystems and species of this isolated and wild corner of Chilean Patagonia. <laughs> 